the market sentiment, uh, surprisingly, uh, I think a little bit more bullish than last week. And we had quite a few bulls this week. Um, stocks just that were the demand just beat the supply. And I thought that was pretty cool. Um, it's just nice to see. It, gives, it, gives, it definitely makes me more. I mean, tomorrow is not going to be that exciting. It's, it's going to be the three-day holiday weekend. Um, but it makes me more excited for the next week. And, and, and this holiday weekend might come just in time, right? Because we kind of need a little reset. Like, you know, like it, the market's just starting to get a little bit better. Nice three-day weekend. People come back ready to go. So I'm excited for next week. Especially because we kind of heated up, um, heated up a little this week. But yeah, I mean, pretty much even amount of bulls is bear. Still not a lot of movers. Like in previous webinars, is, is the market closed tomorrow? No, the market's closed Monday. Yeah, the market closed Monday, but tomorrow it's going to be like super light. You know what I mean? Like it's going to be super like trading will probably kind of shut down after the first hour or two anyway. Yeah. So anyway, uh, but it'll kind of be a nice reset, I think. You know, like the market's just starting to get better and then everyone's forced to take three days off. Um, and people are going to come back and they're going to remember, oh, it's just getting better. I, I don't know. I think, I think the holiday is going to be, a, you know, it's going to have a bullish out, outlook where sometimes it's bearish, right? When, when things are just getting going and then the holiday weekend kind of kills the momentum. You know, I don't think that, I don't think, you know, you know, that would be kind of a negative impact. I think we're going to have a positive impact on this weekend. So, I mean, that's just my guess, but um, yeah, I, just a whole lot of stuff hanging around and we'll definitely get into some of these. Um, but yeah, like I, I think that the, like I even put on, you know, a couple of slides in the future here. I think that the longs are in control. Um, and that's because it doesn't feel like there's enough range for the shorts on the downside and everything is kind of dry squeezing. And when I, when I typed this out, I kind of giggled because I was like dry squeezing. Um, but like, that's it, kind of what it feels like. We're not getting a whole lot of, you know, like <laughs> wet squeezing, which would be juicy and fun and to the upside and just explosive range. Uh, we're not getting anything like that. Nothing, um, right? It's it's funny term, funny lingo I'm using here. But you know, we're not. We're is it, nothing's exciting. Nothing's super juicy. Nothing's um, just flamboyantly explosive. It's just you know, it's just things aren't tanking. Right. And, and they're squeezing up and it's, there's not much to the squeezes. It squeezes up and then they'll fall down. Um, <laughs> it's, I, I'm, I promise I'm not trying now, but you know, it's, it's squeezing up and there's just nothing there. There's nothing after there's no follow through, you know, it's just like the, the stocks aren't, you know, they're, they're just, they're not being, they're not really fading that much. Um, and it, um, but it's not, it, it's not giving longs anything to be excited about, but, um, it's probably easier to be a long right now than it is to be a short, um, easier, not necessarily more profitable, but easier. And I'll continue with this. I'll, I'll do this slide out of order too, because I'm kind of on the subject. Um, but yeah, the range this week um, is uh, still lower. It is growing. I should have. I should have actually moved this. I should have actually moved that a little, a little bit more back. We definitely have more range than last week. It's probably more where we're at. Uh, but yeah, I, I feel like the control is actually in the long sport, right? And it seems kind of odd because we are kind of dead. Uh, but like, it feels like the longs are kind of winning on the few stocks that we have to play with uh, because it seems like the shorts are a lot more desperate than the longs. Like the longs are, you know, they're, they're, they're not getting bagged on this shit. Like a, a lot of, like a lot of the capital has left. I think long capital has kind of left like myself included. I'm not really participating that hard. Like I bought, I bought two, I had two winners this week. I bought GOVX uh, and RDBX and, and I won on both of them, but like not a whole lot. And I wasn't excited about them. Like just, you know, like it was, how do I say a boring win, but like, I knew that, like, I knew that that was all there was to give. So I wasn't going to let myself get back. 
And I feel like, you know, a, a lot more long traders are, are, are behaving that way. Like, like I noticed Harry, he's showing up later. Terry and I used to wake up at one in the morning and now we're both kind of being a little bit lazy or sorry, one in the morning, my time, that would be 7 a.m. market time. Uh, and now I'm waking up like 30 minutes before the open. And, I feel, and that was a gradual process, but it's because it's just gradually getting crappier, you know, but um, I feel like a lot more longs are kind of joining that train. Longs aren't getting bagged like they were. So the only people left in the fucking stocks that are moving are um, fucking shorts. And this is where, this is normally when you get a big runner. It's when longs have kind of turned off um, and it's just shorts. Like the only people fucking trading every day are short because there's nothing exciting enough for longs. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're getting into this situation where there's a stock that pops, whatever. Um, and shorts just fucking are all over and longs are like, fuck this, I'm not getting bagged. So the only people in are shorts. Like the only people in are just, short. yeah, longs are on the sidelines, shorts are playing against each other. And so like, it's just shorts kind of like squeezing over themselves, but longs aren't really ready to engage yet. Um, and that's why we're not seeing the follow through, right? In order to get follow through kind of momentum movers, um, you, you, need, you need two, you need both elements of demand. And in previous webinars, I talked about um, the two, you know, there's two aspects of demand, right? The, the aspect of shorts covering and longs buying. And, the, and you need both to have momentum. If you only have one, it's going to fizzle. Um, like, you know, the, like, in order for momentum movers to happen, shorts have to be in the game and longs have to be um, squeezing them. Um, and, and you have to have that cycle to where longs are confident that, oh, yeah, we just pushed, but shorts are still trapped. I'm going to keep buying. And as long as longs keep buying and shorts keep shorting, uh, you know it will keep going up. And that's and that's that's how these low float that's how these low float movers are going right now. But right now we're missing an element of that, right? Longs are not excited and they have no reason to be excited. If you look at 2022 so far, as far as the overall market is concerned, I think it's like I I, I saw some stat on it. It's like the worst open in 30, 40, 50, 60 years or some some number like that. It's literally the worst open of the market in a very long time. 